BioBalance HealthCast 110, Testosterone, the first hormone to go. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to our continuing presentation of a series of podcasts uh, that are based on a speech that Kathy gave uh, to the St. Louis Family Church. And in this week's segment, Kathy's going to talk about testosterone uh, to this group of women that range from 11 to 92. Uh, testosterone as a female hormone and talk about the the issues that occur as women age when they begin to lose hormone balances both uh, or all three testosterone estrogen and progesterone and and the estrogen piece leads you to talk about the nefarious or infamous uh, WHI study so or the or the wrong the, <laughs> yeah. the to, to be polite yes the, the wrong, wrong WHI study yeah. The study that was done back in early 2000, 2001, mm -hmm. I think it came out in 02. In any case, that study was about, well, the purpose of that study was to say that estrogen was not safe. Right. That's what was ta the replacing table. Replacing estrogen. Replacing estrogen right. was not safe, even though it's one of our female hormones. But it was, it was causing, it caused a huge fear. So I was trying to allay the fears of the audience that the WHI study has been retracted, redacted, found to be a poor study, and that they should not be afraid of something because it was in the newspaper or it was on television, but they should look at the information. And I gave them a lot of information about yes, how safe yes, estradiol is or a young woman's estrogen is given in certain ways. I also talked about the safety of testosterone mm -hmm. and the importance of taking testosterone. And, and progesterone as well. Progesterone is kind of the good female hormone. It balances our estrogen. So, so we talked about all that. So watch with us as we take a look at what Kathy had to say about these issues. Now, uh, before the age of 40, we have too much hormone or imbalance. After the age of 40, we have deficiencies of hormones. Okay, That's when our body was meant divinely to age we were all supposed to be gone by the age of 45. It's only been in the last 100 years that, that we live past 50. So we would be really old. I don't understand the Abraham Sarah thing, so don't even ask me that. Because <laughs> I just can't understand how any, you know, they had to calculate, it was a miracle. It was because a there's no, but normal people who weren't Abraham and Sarah live less, women live less than 40 years because they always, half of us died in childbirth. I mean, in biblical times, it was not, it was not a, a good thing to be a woman in biblical times because most of us were gone by the age of 40. But if you're God, just think how important this would be. You have to get somebody when they're, when they're starting to age, not to have children because then they won't live long enough to take care of them and bring them to maturity, which in those days was like 14. You know, I mean, yeah. that's when people got married. Yeah. I mean, that, it was young. So, so um, what, he, what his system seems to be to me, and I don't, he didn't tell me this. I'll have to ask this on the next trip back. <laughs> but he, but this, is, this is one of those things where I believe that he prepared us for death by the time we were 50 by stopping the one hormone that gave us a sex drive. The first thing to go is testosterone. Without a sex drive, most of the, most of the men leave the tent. We're done. I mean, they do. Just think about it. We'll be, we're like, oh, honey, nah, I don't think so. I turned 40. I'm too old for that. My life's over. Well, nowadays we live to 90. He's looking, he's looking at, at all of those years in front of him without sex. And that's, you know, part of marriage. And that's part of, we should be in, like, wanting it, liking it, enjoying it. That's part of our bond. And it, we changed the rules. So that's a big problem in our lives. And testosterone, it is a chemical change in our brains where we go, oh, I don't need a man. I don't need any man. I don't need my husband. I don't need anybody. I'm... I'm independent because our brains change off of testosterone. So 
Deprivation of testosterone, these are the dominoes. Testosterone's the first one. I don't know if you can see it very well there. But testosterone's the first domino to go. So um, Brett's son, Brett is my co-author on my book, and Brett's son did these really cute dominoes. So this is hormone balance when they're all present before 40. Then hormones start going, okay? So the first one to go is testosterone. And testosterone, like I said, is our sex drive, but it's also our body type. I mean, we were meant to have larger breasts and hips, smaller waist. So if, go back to caveman days or biblical times, if the caveman looks across the river and sees a woman who has a belly, she's either too old to propagate the next cave person, or she is pregnant. So we lose, it's part of our identity. That's why we think our waistlines are so important. We really value having one, and we want to get one because that's a sign of youth and, and sexuality. And we all want to be sexual, beautiful human beings, women, and, and we want to have those qualities for our spouse. So, so testosterone is what gives you your waistline and what keeps your body looking young. So that's that first hormone to go. These are the other symptoms of testosterone loss. And I know you all have heard that, oh, you hit 40 and then it's all over. That's not so wrong. I mean, until I knew this, I didn't realize if you do nothing after 40, it just, everything starts happening. When testosterone goes down, it starts triggering rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disorders. It's, and you start getting lax muscles. You start getting fatty deposits everywhere. And all everything sags. I mean, gravity takes over. It's not just gravity. It's lack of testosterone plus gravity. And so everything just starts dropping. Um, joint pain's a big one for my patients. You lose synovial fluid. I mean, there's a scientific reason behind all the symptoms, and they're all related to this one hormone. How many drugs do we take to treat all of these things when we could just replace the hormone? I mean, that's really what my book's about. Let's just get back what we are missing. Let's just be very efficient and get back the natural hormone that our body no longer makes. I'm not trying to make people live forever. I've heard that before. I am just trying to make us productive women until we die. We cannot work for Christ, our family, or our husbands, and be beautiful people of God try, trying to convince other people to be Christians by our life if we can't get out the door. I mean, if we can't get up, if we don't sleep, if we look like we just rolled, you know, rolled to the meeting like, like this... I mean, we can't convince people that being a Christian is a great thing. We need to be well. And it won't make you live, by replacing all these hormones, it's not going to make you live longer, I don't think, because they haven't done a study that long. It is going to make you live a quality of life. And that's what I'm looking for, quality of life for all of us. And no one's telling us this because all the drug companies are, want to sell 10 drugs instead of one hormone. So this will be listed so you can take a look at it. So here's the next thing. We talked about the men leaving the tent when testosterone leaves. Well, when there's a disparity. Now, this I can kind of understand, too, from, you know, the perspective of if I were getting to plan this. Women lose their sex drive earlier than men by 10 years. Okay, so some people say, well, that means God's a, a guy. But, that, but he's both. <laughs> So there's a reason for it. I mean, I've heard, I've heard that too. That's not, I don't believe that that's the point. The point is, when, we're, when we lose our sex drive, and if we're going to be dead by 50, he should, we needed more babies. Because babies died in childbirth. We're so lucky now that our babies lived to, to maturity now, and they get to be adults. But we lost more than half of our babies in those times. So it, the fragile ones died. So now we have to really... Get the husbands have to go, oh, well, I'm out of the tent. Let me go find somebody younger. And nothing has changed, has it, in society? That we can change it. Yeah. We don't have to live like that. We can have testosterone our whole lives and keep our marriage vows and keep our marriage bonds. And we can do this because 
When you get testosterone back, your sex life gets, gets back. It comes back. And you think, oh, he's so cute, when you thought, I'm, I'm, that guy doesn't even need to come in that door anymore. <laughs> I mean, I used, to, I used to look at my husband and go, I earn a living, so what are you doing here? Before I got my testosterone. I mean, and now I go, oh, isn't he so cute? You know, that's, it's a whole different way to think. And testosterone changes our minds. Some of my patients are here. They all know that's true. So, okay, quantity of life versus quality. Medicine thinks of quantity. They want you to take blood pressure medicine or whatever, and you should take it if you need it. But they want you to take blood pressure medicine and stay alive as long as you can, but that puts you in a nursing home for 20 years. That's not life. That's not the life we all want. We want to have our muscles. We don't, the minute you lose your testosterone, start doing this. And you start losing muscle tone, and you're, it's not your bones, it's your muscles. They don't hold you up anymore, and that's what puts us on walkers and in wheelchairs. We, I, have, I have an 85-year-old gentleman and an 83-year-old woman who are both a wonderful couple. They have sex every day. They're on, both on testosterone. And they're happy. <laughs> they are happy. Awesome. And the, and the gentleman had, had hip surgery before he was, not because of that. It was, <laughs> that was not in the script. <laughs> okay, so the, the gentleman had hip surgery but it was before he decided to take the testosterone. So his wife brought him in. He couldn't get out of a wheelchair. This is a guy who was so active. He's now been on him three years. He was so active. He would fix, he had homes that he bought and rented. He fixed them all himself. He was at, in his 80s, he has hip surgery. He can't get out of a wheelchair because he can't make muscle. He can't build his muscles back. He goes to physical therapy. He does everything he's supposed to do. He can't get out of the chair. We gave him testosterone pellets. Men need a lot. We didn't give him as much as we'd give somebody who was 50, but we gave him plenty, and that's why they have sex every day. But also, he got out of that wheelchair. He was a week to a walker, a week to a cane, and now he's climbing up ladders, which I don't suggest either, but he's fine. That's all it took. All the, the doctors gave him medicine, and they said, you're going to be in a wheelchair the rest of your life. So they were going to have to lose their house and everything. You don't have to do that. You can have your testosterone back. You can have your life back. And your parents can. They don't have to do that. They don't have to give up their lives for that. So that's why we call it anti-aging medicine. Cause, not because we don't want you to age and go to heaven. We want you to, we want you to be well till you get there. So, okay, second step when we're aging is loss of progesterone. We've talked a lot about that. That happens after we've lost our sex drive, after we've lost all, all of our will to get out of the house, then we lose our progesterone. PMS, irritability, unhappiness, bloating, miserableness, so the rest of the guys that were in the tent leave. Half of them are already gone. <laughs> so, I mean, think about that. If, you, if he comes home to every day, what do you think's gonna happen? And but it's a hormonal issue. Get it fixed. Don't just, you know, so, so we need our progesterone back as long as we have estrogen. And that's the next one to go. So these are the symptoms of progesterone loss, irritability, uterine fibroids, anxiety, depression, all of those. Then the last one goes, that's menopause. Menopause can happen 10 years later after testosterone leaves. So we have this 10-year window. They call perimenopause, which is a misnomer. My college of OBGYN says that's perimenopause. Perimenopause, peri means right around menopause. In general, it's more than 10 years. And it's not due to estrogen. It's due to testosterone when it starts and then progesterone. So it's a, it's a misnaming of a condition. It's really testosterone deficiency and then progesterone deficiency and then menopause, okay? So as long, when we get to that third step, that's finally menopause. When we stop making eggs, eggs make estradiol, eggs make that, the fem what we always have thought was the female hormone. When we stop that, then that whole process 
is complete, and we stay in menopause the rest of our lives if we don't replace our hormones. So loss of estradiol is the, the last step, and no, it doesn't end. As it, menopause doesn't end unless you, give your, unless you get estrogen back, and, the, and for the other things, unless you replace those. You're gonna have, if you have hot flashes longer than two years after menopause, you're going to have them the rest of your life. <laughs> so, stop, so stop waiting to replace it. If you wait to replace it, you're going to lose your bone mass. You're going to lose your mind. If you, I'm serious. Your mind is dependent on testosterone and estrogen. If, if you take estrogen within 10 years of menopause... You, have, you delay the onset of all dementias by 10 more years. If you're, if you're going to get it by genetics at 60, you're going to get it at 70. But if you add testosterone in the 10 years after you lose it, then you're going to add another 10 years. So you keep the age of onset goes way out. You'll die of something else by then. Who wants, have, who wants to not know who they are? We don't want that for our mothers. We don't want that for ourselves or our children. So just replacing these hormones brings back enough of the repair that we do on our brains and stops that collection of goo all over the neurons so that that's what Alzheimer is. It's like, it's like you took a wire and then you put all kinds of insulation on it and it just stopped, stopped the electric flow. So that's what we're talking about. We don't want that. We want our brains to repair the rest of our lives. So the symptoms of menopause are much fewer than you probably thought because you were thinking, ah, the testosterone symptoms are really the estrogen symptoms. If your doctor tells you you need estrogen for your sex drive, he's wrong. You're not getting sex drive. You're just going to not have pain during intercourse. We call it old lady bottom. <laughs> I'm oh, and this is something for the young people. You can be on a very low estrogen pill if for birth control, and it will give you old lady bottom. So then you need to change your pills. Because it, that means pain when you have intercourse. Pain when you're having sex. We need to have a meeting of everybody over 40 or 50 yeah. where we can talk about these intimate details. <laughs> I'll try to stay off of them at this point. Now, the biggest question I get about estrogen is the WHI study. This study is really interesting. You can change the world by having one headline say the right thing for your mission, and the government did. The government put out the WHI study, and the WHI study was poorly done, and if you read it, it didn't say what the headline read, and it stopped women from taking estrogen in 2002. We've gone 10 years with women stopping their estrogen of all kinds. In fact, what it should have said, not estrogen causes breast cancer and heart disease. It should have said Provera, which is a progestin. It's a synthetic progesterone. Progesterone's good, synthetic progesterone's bad. This is what was with the estrogen. That causes heart disease and breast cancer because it's, it makes a lot of the wrong kind of estrogen when it goes through the stomach. But the people that were on estrogen had a lower rate of breast cancer and a lower rate of heart disease. And after this came out, headline, everybody stops their estrogen, then all these studies came out saying, that wasn't true. Read the study. And they had more studies that have proven that this isn't true. You protect yourself from heart disease and breast cancer by taking non-oral estrogen, okay? Not a pill. The pill after menopause is not birth control pills, but not an oral tablet or capsule, you should take your estrogen by patch, by gel, any other way, that you, and I give it by pellet. I put it, I insert it, because then I know you're taking it. It's in your hip, and my nurse practitioners, and I put it there, and I know you got to come back in four months. So we put it under the skin. It's time release. You have, don't have to do anything else, and it's natural, and it's kind of like what your ovary did, not as good. Nothing's going to be as good as what God gave us, but it's not dangerous. So the WHI study was absolutely and positively wrong. You shouldn't be afraid of estrogen. So thank you for joining us today as we talk about hormone replacement and the safety of hormone replacement. And hopefully you'll be able to come back uh, next week for the conclusion of our series. 
And I hope you feel better about taking hormones or looking into taking hormones because of the safety items we discussed. And, mm -hmm. and you can talk to your doctor about getting your hormones replaced in the safest way. And one of the things you may want to come back for is in the next segment, Kathy has an opportunity to have some audience interaction and take some uh, questions and answers. And so some of the questions that are asked may be questions that you have. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.